very much for being here. I apologize for the slight delay. I had yet another busy morning. Clearly, I'm very happy to be here to take stock of the G7 Leaders uh, Summit under the Italian Presidency. And I must say from the very outset that for me and for Italy, it was a true honor to hold the presidency of the G7 in 2024, and there are a number of people I need to thank. First and foremost, all the team which was involved in organizing and managing an extremely complex event. I would also like to thank all those who were behind the many diplomatic consultations, starting with Ambassador Elisabetta Belloni and uh, her staff. She was involved in very complex negotiations. I would like to thank uh, my diplomatic advisor, Fabrizio Saggio. And I must also add that we had a very challenging agenda with uh, a high number of delegations present, particularly during the outreach sessions. And I have to thank all those who made it possible for us to hold our meetings um, in such an efficient fashion. Uh, thanks to them, we were able to work uh, in this very efficient way. Things went smoothly. I would like to thank all of the officials uh, of the Italian uh, um, government and authorities for having made this uh, huge success, and there's no denying that uh, it was precisely that. And I would like to thank all of the law enforcement uh, uh, bodies that uh, made sure that everything took place in a safe and secure environment. I'd also like to thank the journalists uh, who had to shuttle back and forth uh, between Bari and Borgognazia. Thank you for having uh, provided coverage uh, of the event um, for the benefit of Italy and uh, the rest of the world. I'm grateful to the people of Apulia and the local authorities for their very warm um, welcome. And we believe that this wonderful part of Italy will uh, gain even more recognition at a global level uh, for its assets and beauties. At the end of the day, the result was uh, due to excellent teamwork. And had there been any need for this, yet again, Italy has risen to the occasion and uh, um, was successful in organizing uh, such an important event. This is something the Italian people should all be proud of. At times, we tend to forget what we can achieve. But I think today is a, is a, a, a day when we should celebrate that. The summit ended yesterday with the formal uh, approval of uh, a communique that had been drafted in the previous days. And I would like to stress this because I think this is not something we should take for granted. It shows that we have one vision. The final communique, the Apulia G7 leaders communique, is a, a very, um, let's say, comprehensive uh, document uh, which addresses the many challenges we have to tackle. Um, there are a number of issues uh, that are uh, addressed that are of huge relevance uh, um, for us and for our future. And we have acted in a very coordinated way. Uh, I would like to thank Joe Emanuel, Rishi, Olaf, uh, Justin, Fumio, uh, Ursula, and Charles. I would like to thank their team, their Sherpas, for having contributed in such a positive and significant way to the success of this summit. And I would also like to thank the many leaders um, from uh, our 
other uh, countries and international organizations that took part in uh, the outreach session, which was one of the most representative uh, ever. We uh, had uh, the uh, World Bank president, uh, um, the IMF uh, managing director, the OECD secretary general, the UN secretary general, the African Development Bank. We also had um, President Zelensky, who was present uh, at the um, session on Ukraine. We had leaders from Brazil holding the G20 presidency, India. Um, we also had the um, president of Mauritania, um, its capacities AU chair. We also had uh, the leaders of Kenya, Algeria, uh, Jordan, Turkey, the United Arab Emirates, therefore the Gulf countries. Uh, uh, Argentina, this is important because, as we said during our outreach meeting, G7 is not a, a fortress. It uh, um, shouldn't defend itself from anything or anyone. It should be open to um, the world to engage with others in order to find the right and the most effective approach to our, our development. And uh, it's not about the West against the rest of the world. This uh, is uh, a misconception. Our approach, I think, was made even clearer during the Italian presidency, and the narrative is completely different. Um, and this is something that we are proud of as Italian, as the Italian presidency. Yesterday was an extraordinary day because uh, we were honored to have the Holy Father with us. Um, uh, I will never thank him enough for the great gift he bestowed upon us uh, in um, the G7 was almost five decades of history. This was the very first time that uh, a pope attended the meeting. I wish to thank him, um, thank him for having uh, shared his uh, priceless vision on the topic of artificial intelligence. And I also wish to express my appreciation um, to the Holy Father uh, because he showed great respect uh, and stayed for the entire session to listen to the words of all leaders and this was uh, a true gift and I'll be eternally grateful to the Holy Father uh, for his presence and for his message. Let's move on to content. In the um, final communique, the G7 um, shows that it stands to in defense of the rule of law, the international uh, rules-based order. We know that the system has been, uh, let's say, uh, jeopardized with the Russian aggression war in Ukraine, and the result uh, is clear to us all. We know that um, uh, areas of conflict uh, are multiplying around the world, and we know that uh, some saw um, things differently and didn't believe that we would continue to show support for Ukraine as we have. We continue uh, to have uh, a comprehensive, uh, integrated, um, unified approach to help this uh, nation which has been attacked uh, to look uh, to the future. And the G7 agreed of uh, on an additional uh, support of $50 billion uh, coming from the um, extra profit derived from seized African assets, this is um, Russian assets, excuse me. This is the result of a very important agreement which will have to be ironed out and uh, fi finalized in terms of the technicalities required, bearing in mind the reference framework that um, has already been adopted at the European uh, Union level. We have to continue to stand by Ukraine for as long as uh, is, is necessary, and of course, this is uh, um, essential in order to, let's say, reach uh, a solution to ensure that peace may prevail uh, um, today, as we know. Uh, Switzerland will, host, will be hosting a conference uh, on Ukraine. Our foreign minister is already there. And Italy and um, with our partners um, ha has ensured that uh, support for Ukraine uh, has continued um, to be provided 
unwaveringly. With respect to the situation in the Middle East, we have reaffirmed the key, let's say, proposal put forward, particularly by the United States, sir, for an immediate ceasefire, the release of all of the hostages, and a significant increase in humanitarian aid uh, to the Gaza population. These are issues I also addressed in my bilateral meeting with uh, President um, Joe Biden and with a number of other leaders um, this morning um, as well. And on um, behalf of Italy, I must say that I'm particularly proud of the commitment my country has shown uh, over the last few months, uh, um, particularly with respect to humanitarian support uh, uh, in the Middle Eastern crisis. And the G7 has once again reiterated that uh, no effort must be spared to avert the risk risk of escalation in the region to achieve a lasting um, solution uh, with a two-state um, approach. And this is something that was uh, also, let's say, confirmed by the uh, countries that were invited to the outreach session. The Italian presidency of the G7 has been focusing specifically on its relationship with the African continent. And I'm very proud that uh, the G7 as a whole has shared Italy's approach, which has, let's say, been one of the key features uh, of uh, my, uh, this government um, th with the G7. We have to act together to uh, develop a new um, development paradigm um, with an equal partnership so that African countries can, uh, um, let's say, benefit from uh, their resources. We have shared a number of, uh, let's say, um, proposals uh, with respect to a number of different and perfectly compatible um, approaches. We have the European Union Global Gateway, Italy's Mattei Plan, and the Partnership for Global Infrastructures and Investment, uh, the PG. I, I, uh, of the G7 that was launched uh, uh, two years ago. And we also organized a side event uh, involving the private sector, Italian and U.S. leading companies uh, rep and also international development banks. And I think that this uh, is truly one of the most significant uh, uh, achievements of the G7 because this uh, actually uh, bears witness to a very concrete approach. Um, many discussions have been held on Africa, many documents and papers have been pr produced, but we have to um, make sure that concrete action can follow, uh, let's say, these words. We have mm, focused on uh, relaunching development, uh, promoting food security, energy, digital technologies, infrastructures, and I believe that this really makes the difference. And I would like to rapidly mention the Apulian Food Security Initiative, uh, the aim of which is to um, strengthen uh, uh, agricultural production and improve the resilience of uh, infrastructures, energy for growth in Africa to foster the production uh, generation uh, distribution of green energy. This is an initiative adopted by the G7, which was also um, supported by seven African nations and some of the countries that attended the outreach meeting yesterday. The intention is that of extending this uh, in a very open and and uh, um, transparent way. We also have the G7 hub on the sustainable use of land to promote precisely the sustainable use of land, the African Virtual Investor Platform, the G7 platform for green investments um, to encourage investment in Africa with a special focus on clean energy, clean technologies, 
And lastly, I'd like to mention the establishment of a center to promote uh, um, the launch of uh, um, digital uh, systems, particularly focusing on AI. And we know there's a huge potential that can be tapped, uh, linking these initiatives with the PGII and the Global Gateway, and of course the Mate Plan. Another extremely important um, commitment on the part of G7 is that of uh, ensuring that African economies participate more fully in global supply to ensure the development uh, and distribution of wealth in those countries. So these are not just uh, documents uh, that we're talking about. Uh, we have always tried to ensure that concrete actions can follow. And this is something that the summit has uh, been uh, delivering. We believe we have to cooperate with uh, Africa. And as you know, this is the best way to tackle another a global emergency, i.e. the management of migration flows. Uh, following Italy's initiative for the very first time in its history, the G7 has addressed the issue of uh, management and government of migration flows. The final declaration reiterates uh, our commitment to tackle the root causes of migration in order to um, guarantee the first right uh, that should be, say, ensured the right to be able to stay at home in one's country to be able to fulfill uh, aspirations uh, um, without having to leave. And then we also um, reiterated our commitment to fight trafficking um, in human beings. We obviously need this global coalition uh, to work together to tackle the scourge of uh, uh, smuggling and trafficking networks that uh, are a new form of slavery. I'm particularly proud of the outcome of this uh, uh, debate. Uh, this is uh, a first for a G7 uh, uh, summit, and it's the first time this issue was addressed so clearly. Uh, and uh, uh, we adopted the approach of two great Italians, Giovanni Falcone and Paolo Borsellino, Borsellino who um, said that in fighting the mafia, you had to use a follow-the-money approach. We know that uh, um, trafficking has become the most profitable uh, um, activity for criminal networks. Uh, um, let's say um, it is a, a more profitable uh, uh, activity than uh, uh, um, weapons uh, smuggling, uh, it is on par with drug smuggling, and this is a very significant achievement indeed. And then we address the topic of artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is a topic that the Italian presidency chose to include in our discussions, uh, as we pointed out in uh, the two days we had meetings uh, on and we think that this initiative needs to be developed but it must be human centered and uh, humans should be the let's say, ultimate purpose of the use of this technology. The Holy Father um, made a very significant and uh, profoundly ethical contribution, uh, and uh, he talked about algorithmics. Uh, in other words, uh, the need to ensure that algorithms are ethical. We succeeded in adopting this, the uh, inclusion of uh, um, a, a marking system so that uh, citizens can recognize, let's say, the validity of uh, certain technologies. We considered the impact of artificial intelligence uh, on the labor market. We believe that this technological revolution will impact 
all sectors and the lives of millions and millions of workers. The declaration addresses a number of other topics, Indo-Pacific, uh, supply chains, economic security, the climate energy nexus. We're also aware that the um, major challenges uh, that have to be addressed at a global level are interconnected, and this is why we have chosen to build on the results of the Japanese uh, presidency uh, last year. We have continued to keep uh, focusing on the Indo-Pacific and economic security, the aim being that of sending a very clear signal, particularly to China. We're open to dialogue, but obviously our uh, companies must be able to uh, compete uh, on an equal footing. Uh, we need a free and fair market because uh, uh, fair competition is essential for a market to be, uh, let's say, effective. We also, of course, focused on the Mediterranean, our sea, which has once again been placed center straight stage. It is the, uh, let's say, uh, middle sea between the Atlantic uh, and the Indo-Pacific, as we have said, uh, obviously considering the Persian Gulf as well. This is an opportunity for Italy, if uh, well uh, managed, because it means that we can, uh, let's say, um, be a key player also uh, for Europe uh, in the field of energy, as we've been discussing, but also with respect to data, uh, the energy of our digital societies. And this is a, a trend that is, uh, in fact, going to be consolidated. We have the uh, Blue Rama project, uh, which will connect uh, through the measure in India and uh, the European uh, continent, and this is a strategic project uh, that can set the example. And there are other themes, uh, obviously climate change included in the uh, communique. Obviously, we cannot afford to lose our, let's say, ambition to attain uh, results without, uh, let's say, uh, any bias. Uh, our approach is that of technological neutrality. And G7 must also take a very pragmatic approach so as to deliver on the commitments that we have made at a global level. Lastly, the um, COP28 in Dubai, bearing in mind that we have to focus on the needs of our productive systems and our citizens. In other words, uh, we can't afford to end up in a paradoxical situation whereby, in order to safeguard the environment, we're going to um, play into the hands of nations that uh, adopt very aggressive policies uh, uh, against the environment. And within the G7, we also agreed on a firm political commitment in favor of a, a more just and stable uh, um, tax system, the global minimum tax and uh, uh, it's a topic that uh, I particularly care about uh, as uh, um, chair of the forum. The, o the OECD uh, Secretary General explained that the OECD multilateral convention that was negotiated on the global minimum tax is ready to be signed. Uh, from a technical point of view, the G7 and the OECD have worked uh, um, in parallel with the G20. Now it's up to to um, individual countries to express its political will to uh, join, uh, let's say, alliance. This, in sum, is what the summit has addressed, and I'm extremely, extremely pleased with um, the outcome, obviously. In the course of the summit, uh, I also had a number of multilateral, bilateral meetings, excuse me. I had a bilateral meeting with President Joe Biden. We discussed the main, um, let's say, crises uh, at a global level. We also looked at bilateral issues, investment opportunities, and new technologies. And I would also like to point out that over the last year also, Italian export to the US increased by almost seven billion. And this uh, is tangible proof of the, let's say, uh, consolidation of a fundamental partnership. I also had talks with uh, Prime Minister Trudeau and, Prime, and President Lula in order to ensure continuity between the Italian uh, presidency this year and the Canadian presidency next year and continuity between the G7 and the G20, which, as we know, uh, um, comes under the Brazilian presidency with Canada. We also adopted 
the um, action plan to strengthen bilateral cooperation. The same is true for uh, Japan. and. We had meetings with the uh, Prime Minister of Japan on this topic. Uh, with uh, Mr. Modi, we also explored opportunities to um, strengthen our strategic partnership, which began in 2023 with the President of Algeria, Tepun, whom I met this morning. We took stock of the pilot projects, uh, which uh, are uh, linked to the Mate Plan for Africa. The Mate Plan for Africa, in addition to being discussed with uh, President Tebun was also discussed in our meeting with the uh, President uh, of the World Bank and uh, the African Development Bank Group. Uh, together, we have looked at uh, uh, joint uh, initiatives for the development of African countries um, with the President uh, of the African Development Bank Group, uh, Dr. Adesina. We also identified new financial instruments to uh, launch the Mate Plan, particularly to attract foreign uh, private private investment uh, to uh, Africa. And this is in, uh, just a short summary of the meetings I had uh, uh, during the uh, summit. I obviously uh, had exchanges with other leaders, King of Jordan, President Millet, uh, Sheikh uh, Mohammed bin Zayed, the President of Kenya, Muto, uh, the UN Secretary General. So clearly, we had discussions with all of the leaders present at the summit. I also had the opportunity to have an exchange uh, with the president of Mauritania. Mauritania is the, uh, the AU chair at the moment. And uh, as you know, uh, um, President uh, Mohamed Dould uh, Ghazwani was the keynote speaker in our session on uh, Africa. And uh, I'd like to end by saying that the summit is over, but the Italian presidency uh, is looking to the next few weeks and months uh, when uh, ministerial meetings will be held in the course of which we will continue to, uh, let's say, focus on our priorities. Uh, we started uh, on the 1st of January and uh, we will, by the end of the year, have held 21 ministerial meetings plus uh, more than 130 technical uh, meetings in addition to uh, meetings uh, with uh, our civil Societies, Women Seven, Youth Seven, Civil Seven, Labour Seven, Business Seven for the first time. I would like to also mention that the Italian presidency this year chose to organize ad hoc meetings on the issue of defense, on the issue of disability, which I believe is something else that the Italian presidency should be rightly proud of because this is something that had never occurred before and uh, um, in a G7 uh, format, uh, and we also focused on tourism. So, as I have already said, I'm extremely proud of uh, our achievements and of the success of the summit. Italy it took center stage uh, over the last few days. Uh, the world has been watching us. This was a huge responsibility, but I'm extremely pleased and proud um, of the way in which our country has once again amazed people and has uh, uh, shown the way forward. I would like to thank all of the members of this extraordinary theme. Um, so let's start with the questions. Thank you. Let's start with the questions. Manuel Lauria from Republic, if you'd like to stand. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, Prime Minister. One of the passages in the conclusions of the summit, which has been much discussed, is the one on rights. Could you tell us here why the term abortion was not included in the conclusions? And why was there just a reference to the final declaration of uh, Hiroshima? And the French President Macron actually said that he regretted this and reminded us that France uh, had um, inclu has included uh, the right to abortion in their constitution. Would you propose the same thing in uh, Italy? And in this connection, I'd like to ask whether your majority wishes to uh, change law 194 on um, uh, interrupting pregnancies. And also the questions about future uh, 
top jobs in Europe and I'd like to know whether you support the candidacy of Ursula von der Leyen. I've said uh, a thousand times that I don't want to amend uh, Law 194. I want to apply it in all its uh, parts. I think it's a very good law which doesn't require any changes with the reason for the, as far as the reason why there's no reference to the word, uh, word abortion. Uh, it's not there. I've already answered because uh, usually in the final documents of these sessions things which uh, are already uh, taken as um, uh, ascertained and not uh, repeated. We uh, repeated the reference to the Declaration of Hiroshima in the Declaration of Hiroshima. It was very clear that um, free and safe access to abortion was guaranteed. And when uh, something um, is repeated, generally there's a reference to previous uh, documents. I think that uh, this debate is something which has been artificially uh, um, promoted. There was no dis debate on this in our discussion because there was nothing, uh, no reason to argue on any of this. So I understand uh, the reasons why these um, arguments arise. I understand why some people fuel these fires. But it was not something which we um, had um, any heated discussion on. With regard to um, the European um, posts, uh, post in, uh, we'll have a meeting on Monday, as you know, and that will be where our assessments will be presented. Uh, you also know how the proposal on the presidency of the European Commission works. It's up to the uh, PPE, which is the, uh, has the highest number of members of parliament. When the proposal comes in, we'll see what the assessments are on the other top posts. We'll obviously be um, making our uh, judgments and what I'm interested in the first topic, first two topics actually, which are of importance to me on, and that will be the basis on which I'll make my de decision for the Italian government. Obviously, having heard the other parties in the majority coalition is first of all that uh, Italy has uh, its role recognized in terms of uh, responsibilities to be um, held when the Commission is established and that Europe understand the message which has been conveyed by the European citizens. Because if we want to draw a lesson from the elections in Europe, and if we want to read that as uh, meaning everything's fine, I think we'd be wrong. The uh, Europeans are asking for pragmatism. They're asking for a less ideological approach on a number of issues. They want Europe to deal more with certain priorities which have um, not been dealt with intensively, and uh, they want things which have been dealt with intensively be dealt with less intensively. And I hope that message is um, understood, because citizens vote for a reason. They want to lend a message to a politician on which line is to be followed. I think that the message has been uh, conveyed very clearly, and that's what I'm interested in. You know what I think in terms of the priorities Europe should deal with in the coming years, and we will do our, make our assessments based uh, on uh, these considerations. We're not um, playing um, games of uh, filling in all the slots before people elect. I think we have to respond to the indications we receive from our citizens. Angela Lante, Reuters. Good afternoon, Prime Minister. Uh, with regard to the agreement you reached on the 50 billion loan to U Ukraine, I'd like to ask you how much will uh, the payment of um, Italy amount to? Will this provide provided directly by the government or through the European Union? There's one point which is uh, still unclear in this loan. What would happen if the Russian assets which are frozen, which uh, underpin this loan, were to return into the hands of Moscow. In that case, would the loan weigh on uh, our national accounts and uh, therefore also on the Italian uh, balance? Thank you. I think that, as you know, the uh, 50 billion loan has already been announced. Uh, will be provided by the United States, then Canada, United Kingdom, and 
probably Japan, uh, compatibly with the constitutional limits which exist, have announced that they will also want to be involved. Currently, um, European nations are not involved in this alone, also considering the fact that all these assets are in, uh, frozen in Europe, so Europe is already contributing by identifying a uh, guarantee mechanism for the um, repayment of this loan. As we know, this is something which has to be considered by the European Council and will technically have to be uh, sorted out by the European Ministers of Finance. With regard to um, these um, assets being unfrozen, as the assets are frozen because of sanctions, and since the sanctions are linked to the aggression against Ukraine, I think it uh, um, the assets would be unfrozen only in the case of, their, of a peace process. But I believe that a peace process, in the case of a peace process, one would also have to negotiate who's going to uh, pay for the damages uh, suffered by Ukraine. So I think it's something which should be dealt with in a different way. Paolo Capelleri from the ANSA agency. Uh, thank you, Prime Minister. Um, before this um, G7, there was a, a big dispute in um, Parliament. The, the um, Speaker of the Senate said it was a Harakiri event uh, before the G7 meeting. I'd like to know what you say um, about this. I'd like to, um, you said on the eve of the G7 and you tried to connect it to what happened here. I found it very serious that uh, there have been representatives in the majority who um, fall into the trap of uh, provocations. I think those provocations will increase. I think Italian citizens have to ask themselves um, how much uh, political uh, representatives who are trying to um, stir up matters, how much they uh, love their countries, trying to uh, occupy the um, seats of the government when the um, eyes of the world on us. So all of those uh, who try to give us lessons on uh, the uh, respect for the institution should start themselves by showing their respect for our institutions. But in any case, they didn't manage to spoil the success of this fine meeting. Virginia Pietromarchi from Al Jazeera. Good afternoon. If it's not a problem, I'll ask you the question in English. The G7 has once again delivered strong support for Ukraine, both financially and militarily. It has failed, though, to criticize the war conduct of Israel, whose forces have killed more than 37,000 people in eight months, and which ignores ICJ rulings and UN resolutions. How many more civilian deaths would it take for the G7 to condemn or consider steps like sanctions or a ban on weapons sales to Israel, similar to those taken against Russia? Look, I, I think we have to remember uh, who began that, and it was in Israel. So first of all, we should remind that there was somebody who took civilians, women, children, and did something that was incredible. Now what we have to do is to work for peace, and it is exactly what we are doing. And to work for peace, we have to dialogue, and we have to recognize the right of Israel to be safe, the right, the right of Israel to, be, uh, to, to live in peace, and the right of Palestinians to have their own state to live in, uh, in a peaceful way. And it is exactly what we are doing. And it is the only way to deal with this problem. It's not about simply saying something about somebody. It is working dialoguing with everyone. What I said before and what I think is that uh, Israel, it looks like Israel is uh, jumping into a trap. For the trap of Hamas was to isolate it. Seems it is working. So whose friend of Israel needs to give uh, clear words to Israel for its safety? And it is exactly what it is, Italy is doing. Roberto Kinsari, TG1. Uh, Roberto Kinsari, TG1. Good afternoon, Prime Minister. You reminded us that uh, one uh, central image in this uh, G7 meeting was the extraordinary participation of uh, Pope Francis. 
which uh, what impressed you most in the uh, words of Pope Francis on artificial intelligence. And with regard to this technology at this uh, panel of leaders, which um, area has raised most uh, concerns or most hope? For example, the military use um, in positive terms and negative terms, and which uh, seems to be the ring uh, of power, and uh, which can has huge power but can also make enslave you. I think that the words which the Holy Father addressed to us on the relationship between uh, this technology and uh, weapons and defense was a very important message. Holy Father said no machine can independently decide whether to uh, uh, do away with the life of a human being. Uh, being. That these are some of the huge existential issues which are raised by artificial intelligence and uh, which we need to um, and on which we need to question ourselves um, in depth. I think this is one of the issues, because sometimes I had this feeling in the uh, debate, we shouldn't deal with this issue as if it were all white or all black. We need to develop it, uh, and that's all, and we'll leave it to the market on the one hand, or the message which uh, sometimes appears to be the message of those who say, we need to ensure that man, human beings have to be at the center of the process and we shouldn't develop uh, artificial intelligence. I said at the end of the outreach just yesterday that instruments, tools are neutral. They're not in themselves good or bad, so it depends how we manage to turn them towards what is good or even how we can limit the risks of um, what's bad. Uh, artificial intelligence has a lot of risks, but it also conveys a lot of opportunities. It's a multiplier. What do we want to multiply is the question we need to ask ourselves. And obviously the answer is not an easy one, but among the risks we need to include impact on the labor market, which has been uh, one of the Italian focuses because we are uh, accustomed to a technology which uh, optimizes human skills, but replacing uh, jobs um, which um, progress has um, accustomed us to was generally replacement of physical jobs, and that allowed human human beings to focus on higher level work uh, with conceptual work. When it's the it's our intelligence which runs the risk of being uh, replaced, the impact on the labor market can be uh, very, very big. We need to uh, come to terms with the future where an increasing number of people run the risk of not being useful. And an impact which um, reaches um, very high level um, areas such as uh, the professions and other areas. We're talking about uh, health and the role of AI in the health sector. I also use AI as a tool to help us to find uh, cures for diseases which uh, we haven't uh, yet um, succeeded in doing. But if we're thinking, that's one thing, but if we think that we can replace um, doctors with applications owned by the pharmaceutical companies, that's something else. And I think uh, we need to realize that sometimes we swap our freedom for convenience and the results of uh, what we're doing may only become clear when we can no longer take any corrective action. That's one aspect connected with artificial intelligence. Another aspect uh, connected with artificial intelligence is that we're obviously going towards a world where it would be very difficult to recognize what's true and what's not untrue. And the impact uh, this has in particular on uh, democratic systems in the relationship between uh, politics and citizens is potentially devastating. Another problem linked to AI is that all the major innovations which produce uh, competitive ad advantages also lead to uh, tension and the risk of, uh, therefore, of uh, chaos um, on top of uh, prior chaos. So these are all things we have to deal with bravely and boldly and uh, carefully. And we shouldn't do that by separate 
cooperating the political decision maker and the people developing AI. This is a discussion which needs to be carried out with the people developing AI. And that's why one of the deliverables which we um, decided to have in the conclusions of the Italian presidency is labeling, to have a label which uh, allows those using AI to recognize companies which um, undertake certain commitments in terms of transparency, in terms of um, uh, attributing central role to uh, people. I think that's an important uh, development. And so this was a, a very fascinating uh, debate. It truly is an interesting debate. It's not something which ends here. We'll be organizing other initiatives on this. There are other countries which are um, organizing initiatives too. You remember uh, last year also attended the safety summit organized by my, my friend uh, Rishi Sunak. So everybody is um, questioning themselves on this issue. And obviously, the debate uh, can remain at European level. The European Union has already uh, become involved. And Italy has become involved. We've all established our rules. But it's also one of those areas where it becomes fundamental to uh, share the um, our activity with a lot of other international actors. So these are measures which, in order to be effective, have to be taken at the global level, we tried to do what we could because uh, this was certainly one of the forums in which to discuss this global governance. Stefano Pitrella from the Washington Post. Petrella, sorry. Good afternoon, Madam President. Thank you in advance for your time. If you don't mind, I would like to ask my question in English. Yeah. Now, as a leader, you've been empowered at the G7 summit you just hosted as the only one of your European counterparts with a recent electoral victory. The G7 final document includes a reference to the risk of backward steps on LGBTQ plus rights, an issue which had already been raised with you in the past. How will such commitment affect your political action on social rights henceforth? And how do you intend to employ your clout as an increasingly influential conservative politician? Will you try to leave your mark by bringing more change to Europe and Italy? Will you, for instance, seek to curb green policies you see as too costly? Or support blocking puberty blockers for minors? I'm not sure I heard, I understood the whole, well, all of the question, but uh, there's no s step backwards. Yes, yes, thank you. That, will, that way I'll be sure I've understood the question. You know, I was saying, to go to the question directly, the final document in G7 include, includes a reference to the risk of uh, steps backward on the uh, LGBTQ plus uh, rights, which an issue has already been raised um, by G7 colleagues uh, to you. And so your commitment contained in the final declaration of G7, uh, how will this influence the political situation from now and uh, in, um, in general at the European level? With your growing uh, influence at the European level, how are you going to influence European policies on uh, what, your, uh, what you consider here. I was uh, uh, giving you examples of referring to green policies or in uh, detail uh, references to puberty blockers. Uh, with regard to issues like puberty blockers, I think national states have to have the sensibility. I don't think the EU should deal with this. With regard to LGBTQ, I would like to uh, thank you for quoting the conclusions because people have said there's been a step step backwards, and what you quoted shows there's been no step backwards. And with regard to my uh, political influence, I think what's happened in these two years of Italian government have uh, demonstrated a very different situation um, compared with the uh, narrative which uh, unfortunately is presented by some so-called observers. I'd like to remind you that the Italian government taken backwards from the current rules on abortion, LGBTQ uh, rights, and uh, so forth, and see our expectations, sorry, the expectations of some have been um, disappointed, but uh, these, uh, because this narrative didn't, uh, wasn't in line with the truth, which is often happening in Italy and uh, elsewhere when we told the situation in Italy. Francesca Malfitano from the Messaggero. 
Uh, hello, Prime Minister. Inside the conclusions of the summit, there was a reference to the Olympic uh, truce. And uh, do you think that this could be a way to reach a de-escalation in the Ukraine? You manage the ro you stress the role of Joe Biden in supporting Kiev, but at the next G7 in Canada, there might be Donald Trump instead of uh, Joe Biden. Are you concerned that the role of the United States may change in this area? I'm not concerned with respect to the upcoming presidential elections in the United States. Obviously, I never meddle with um, elections in other countries. I don't like doing that, and uh, uh, that is something I don't like others to do. I think that the French request is a very sound one, and there was unanimity in support of it. I don't know whether it will actually be possible to obtain this uh, Olympic truce, but this is another element in a very complex uh, uh, debate. Uh, obviously, as you know, this is a reference that was also made in line with uh, a United Nations resolution. We will have to wait and see, but I'm very happy that we have done our share and intend to continue uh, working towards uh, uh, possibly including this element of de-escalation and in closing. I would also like to uh, wish all the best of luck to all of the Italian athletes uh, who will be competing in the 2024 uh, Olympic Games now. Miki Nuara, Japan TV. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd like to ask about the, the action plan between Japanese government uh, and the Italy's interest in the Indo-Pacific region. And Italy is currently strengthening the defense and security cooperation between Japan, and uh, there are such as, uh, important projects such as development of a joint uh, fighter jet and dispatch of aircraft carrier in the summer. But at the same, same time, I guess that the China, and not only Japan, but China is, would be the an important partner for the development of Italia. So in this sense, uh, how will you keep the uh, balancing position in this uh, area of Indo-Pacific area? And what kind of cooperation do you hope uh, to strengthen with Japan? Thank you for your question. Now, when it comes to cooperation with Japan, it can be claimed that huge progress has been made over the last two years, as you're aware. Firstly, we defined a strategic partnership, and now we have uh, signed a plan of action, which goes to say that we intend to continue making progress step-by-step uh, step towards uh, strengthening our bilateral uh, cooperation. We're working on this plan of action to uh, promote further cooperation in many areas, security, defense, economic security, supply chains, uh, which of course, as we know, are also the focus of the G7 debate, the energy transition, space. So as you are aware, we have um, um, focused specifically on strategic priorities. And in that respect, I would also like to point out that over the last uh, year, Italy has uh, increased its presence in the Indo-Pacific with a number ca of campaigns, uh, with our uh, fleet, uh, with our planes, and I think that our presence is increasingly important and strategic. This is also true of the G7 presence in general in the Indo-Pacific. The issue of, of supply chains obviously means that we have to carry out uh, some very um, careful uh, let's say analyses uh, um, obviously when uh, we were faced uh, with uh, um, an economic shock, we realized that we had uh, allowed supply chains to evolve in a direction that uh, was unpredictable uh, with the involvement of, um, uh, let's say, um, players, um, the action of which uh, we couldn't, let's say, uh, foresee. And this has led to choking points uh, in our supply chains. The, 
challenge is de-risking and the ability to make sure that we have shorter uh, supply chains. And of course, the other aim is friendshoring. That means that we have to make sure that our supply chains uh, are linked to those of like-minded countries. And this is something we're also doing with Japan. Um, obviously, when it comes to China, I already made my position clear in my uh, opening remarks. Ch China is an important player. Italy intends to pursue, let's say, its dialogue and engagement with China. But uh, as one does uh, uh, normally, uh, we need to have, uh, um, let's say, common rules. Uh, this is uh, essential to make sure that companies can uh, operate with the same rules. The free market is uh, a great achievement, but for a market to be truly free, it must also be fair, which goes to say that there has to be a level playing field. The message that all of the uh, key players, uh, um, I'm sure, uh, can understand is essential for this dialogue. Andrea Bonini, Sky TG. Good afternoon, Prime Minister. Migration flows is a topic in the final uh, communique, and there is also mention of incentivating regular um, migration flows, uh, what measures are envisaged uh, with respect to the international coalition against uh, um, human trafficking, how will that evolve, uh, is there a roadmap, what resources will be allocated to that end. Thank you. With regard to migration flows, legal migration, the document reiterates that there has to be a four-pronged approach. Firstly, the fight against uh, uh, traffickers, uh, the need to address the root causes of migration, and this is something I mentioned when discussing Africa, the ability to manage and uh, favor legal um, pathways for great migration. You will recall that when we launched the three uh, flows decree in Italy, the idea was to allocate additional shares uh, for legal migration to those countries that assisted us in fighting illegal migration and uh, trafficking. Uh, obviously, the issue of legal migration is fundamental, but the conclusions indicate that this is something for nation states to establish. International multilateral organizations cannot um, step in and decide uh, how legal migration should be managed uh, uh, by different countries. With regard to the G7 coalition against uh, um, migrant trafficking, the challenge is that of exchanging information, promoting joint uh, uh, investigation uh, initiative to dismantle um, trafficking gangs, uh, uh, sharing uh, intelligence, working together, and harmonizing legislation is also important. Take the case of the seizure of illicit gains uh, using the same approach which I mentioned earlier, the follow the money approach introduced uh, uh, in the fight against the mafia by um, Giovanni Falcone and uh, um, Paolo Borsellino. This plan of action must be adopted uh, and implemented as swiftly as possible, swiftly as possible. The ministers of the interior will start to work on defining a plan so that we can uh, be as uh, uh, quickly as possible able to implement this plan. Ronny Gasbarri, La Presse. If you could please stand. Thank you. Good afternoon, Prime Minister. Three questions linked to dates. Is your mission to China likely? Is there a date set for that? Then the European top jobs. I would like to know whether it would be better to wait for the results of the elections in France. Macron might have suggested, and uh, with respect to China, um, is this something that uh, the G7 is going to address? Uh, sorry, are you referring to China again? Yes. Well, yes, we are working on a mission to China, which will take place, should take place in the coming weeks. We haven't set a date yet, but it is something I would like to do. Uh, with respect to uh, our bilateral plan, as you know, I received an invitation from uh, President Xi Jinping. Um, 
some time ago. And with respect to the top jobs in Europe, we have not discussed this so far. I read the statements made by our foreign minister, uh, Mr. Tajani, very sensible statements indeed. If this topic were to uh, be discussed, we can uh, say do this on Monday. I think I might have answered all your questions. Yes, thank you. Francesca Pozzi, uh, Mediaset. Please, if you could stand. Thank you. Good afternoon, Prime Minister. Going back to the war in Ukraine. Yesterday, Russia, responding to the G7 conclusions, established the conditions for a ceasefire, withdrawal of uh, Ukraine uh, troops from Zaporizhia, Kherson, um, and uh, um, other areas and uh, a statement that it would not intend to join NATO. I've read these statements on a possible uh, proposal. I believe this is uh, uh, more to do with propaganda than a true sound proposal for negotiation. You know better than I do that unilaterally Russia actually decided the annexation of uh, for Ukrainian regions. As we know, um, it is not controlling these regions uh, in the completely. If President Putin is saying we're prepared to sit at the negotiation table if Ukraine recognizes the annexation or invasion and if it uh, surrenders parts uh, of its uh, territory, parts uh, of its uh, of these regions, uh, well, I don't think that uh, this would be a very sound proposal. I mean, it would be hard to uh, claim that Ukraine has to leave Ukraine in order um, to uh, be able to sit down at the negotiation table. This sounds um, more like a propaganda ex exercise during a G20 meeting. Uh, President Putin said, we would like peace in Ukraine. And I answered, well, just uh, uh, withdraw your troops and you'll have it. I'm sure that uh, there is the attempt to tell a different story. And this is a form of... Uh, uh, say, uh, deliberate disinformation with respect to the responsibilities uh, local, a local um, journalist, Nuovo Quotidiano di Puglia, Francesco Giuffredi, from the local uh, um, daily. Thank you, uh, Prime Minister. Uh, you explained why you chose the, uh, Apulia for uh, hosting the G7 summit. I would like to ask you to... Um, uh, tell us whether uh, the Apulia rose to the occasion, tell us something more with respect to your perception of how things went. And then you've always said that Apulia is a strategic bridge in the Mediterranean. Now, uh, how can this be, let's say, further let's say, developed from now on? Well, I think that from now on, it'll be clear that uh, uh, global leaders uh, uh, have become fully aware of of uh, where they have spent these last few days. I would like to express my appreciation to the people of Apulia. They have uh, really risen to the occasion, uh, and this was the best possible answer to the biased remarks uh, that were featured in the international media. Some might have come here with certain uh, ideas. I'm sure that uh, uh, they will leave with a different picture, the power, the strength of this region and of Italy as a whole, but of Apulia in particular, is its ability to um, be true to its roots, uh, to its traditions. Yesterday, at the end of our meetings, Andrea Bocelli, as you know, sang uh, for the leaders, and that was a great gift. And I wanted uh, last night's event to be characterized by Apulian food. We had uh, um, uh, panzerotti. We had the typical Taranta music. We had women making uh, by hand the typical pasta. There was a typical, uh, let's say, show of lights uh, that um, is featured in religious festiv um, festivals. This was 
Apulia. And I was proud to see that the G7 leaders' uh, jaws dropped and uh, uh, times their mouths uh, uh, also uh, dropped because of the wonderful experience, the taste. Um, for instance, uh, they, we were given uh, uh, it's made with uh, olive uh, uh, stones, uh, um, tables, furniture, or made from the, the olive trees that had to be uh, felled on account of the Xalella um, infestation. And the theme of the evening was that of a global village, that of seeing the great leaders of the world address global challenges, uh, global uh, issues in a village setting. And, and we cannot uh, appropriately address these challenges ahead unless we remember where we come from and we remember our roots and our uh, heritage. And I'm glad that we're able to bring these elements together. For many, they seem to be juxtaposed. I think that they are able to mutually reinforce the significance uh, of these uh, themes. And I'm sure and hope that leaders will come back on holiday to Apulia. Thank you all for your hard work. You were really important uh, players uh, and uh, safe travels.